Hi, hi everyone. Um, good morning to those in India. And um, if you're anywhere else in the world, good day, good evening. Um, it's a really difficult time uh, around the world. People are struggling to cope with the new normal. And therefore, I thought, uh, you know, why not uh, share just 10 to 15 minutes of daily reflections? Uh, since, you know, we are all cooped up, we are looking for a source of inspiration. We are trying to entertain ourselves and also figure out new ways of coping. So today I have with me uh, my friend Pratima Manohar. She is the CEO and co-founder of The Urban Vision. Hi, Pratima. Good morning. Hi, Elsa. Good morning. Where are you joining us from? I'm in a remote village in the south of India. Um, it's the beach town of Malpe. So I, you know, I'm, I'm feeling really grateful to be able to just see the ocean and walk around as we all, you know, are stuck in our homes. Great. So, um, you know, I wanted to ask you, you know, a lot of people were caught unawares when this announcement was made. Were you where you were meant to be or were you caught up in this uh, uh, confusion? I was assuming that there will be a lockdown, looking at what was happening all over the world. But I did not foresee how stringent it was going to be here in India. Um, and I, at that point in time, I thought it was, you know, great kind of quick leadership. But we are now seeing the unintended consequences of this lockdown, especially on the most vulnerable communities. Uh, in our cities and that's really tragic and i hope we can do something to support the uh, migrant workers who make up most of our cities now and uh, pratima you're a business owner yourself you know you have a family business you have uh, you run three resorts in addition to your own business you have over 150 staff uh, many of them who are um, you know i won't say you know, really poor people, but they are, they don't earn that much of salary, like, you know, the gardeners and the waiters and the, um, you know, housekeeping staff. So um, what as what have you done? Can you share one or two things that you as a business owner have has done uh, for the sustainability of your business as well as for your employees? I think uh, the tourism and travel industry has been at the front line of this economic destruction. And a lot of um, the community that works with us is deeply affected. Uh, and uh, one of the things that we've been doing this week is actually just reaching out to them, checking on them, figuring out if they have you know, food, they reach their homes. Um, trying to uh, just give them health updates on how to stay safe during this time. Um, I hope that other employers are doing that as well because there's just so much of misinformation online, on, on WhatsApp, and people uh, are really panicking. I think just reaching out to them, sharing uh, latest updates on how... Uh, how to go through this situation. Also trying to be helpful, you know. Um, there's a old lady who used to just do dishes in our one of our resorts in uh, Malpe. And she, did, she was not very aware of what was going on. And, um, you know, trying to get them um, access to food at this point in time. Because even though the FM announced that 5 kg of free rice uh, to all of all of us, I, I think the communities that really need it most don't really know how to get uh, their hands on that. So I think just uh, looking, um, reaching out to the larger community, uh, figuring out if everybody's safe, uh, if they have access to food, um, you know, those are the little things that we're trying to do. It's too early to figure out, um, you know, how to go through this kind of unprecedented crisis from a business point of view. We hope there will be support, uh, you know, from government 
to uh, businesses that are at the front line of this to essentially walk through this disruption with zero revenue and um you know prathima it's really true none of us know what the future holds for us none of us know um you know what's going on how we are going to recover we there's so much of uncertainty in the future and we're just trying to cope with this right um the a, a recent hbr uh, article the harvard business review speaks of grief and it is like uh, you know when they had a team meeting they asked their people around uh, what exactly uh, are you feeling can you pinpoint an emotion and uh, one of their staff members said it was grief and uh, they wrote a whole article about this new normal is um about letting go of the old ways of doing things it's uh, letting go of what you thought was important in life and getting used to this new normal uh, having recently been through some you know a major major grief uh, you know major incident in your own life how are you coping with grief and what are your tips for example of coping with grief i think one is reach out to friends and talk to them through this uh, crisis that we you know there, there doesn't seem to be an end game no a lot of people are anxious about how you know how this is going to affect their immediate family their grandparents their parents um people are um you know panicking about just their future their larger communities are always found um, action is the best way to handle anxiety um you know just to kind of uh, as having worked in a think tank and having a great network of friends who worked on the front line of uh, social impact it's just been very positive to me uh, to uh, engage with my you know entrepreneur colleagues who are thinking about what do we do about uh, helping the most vulnerable during this uh, crisis so i think it's just a ton of things that are going on uh, at any uh, given time um and if you can just contribute through your thoughts through your leadership um through your ideas at this stage i think that's a good, very helpful way of uh, um dealing with anxiety or grief and i think it also helps to just be grateful for um things that you have and i keep telling everybody around me just make a list of 10 things that you're grateful for and i think that just makes you feel better instantly coming to leadership in this moment of crisis i do believe leadership is going to play a key role of getting us through it of managing it of uh, distributing resources efficiently um what are your thoughts on leadership especially during a crisis what makes a good leader what are the qualities you're looking for and who is the one person you admire who's the one person i admire ah oh, that stuff i think i i at this stage or at any other time i uh, uh value empathy um uh, you know just thinking about the larger picture thinking about uh the larger community and you know how how you can reach out to everybody uh you know just give them a sense of assurance that we will do everything we can to help you go through this crisis um i also admire uh, leaders who can kind of uh, take this opportunity to um, kind of transform our world for better uh, and I, we are seeing a ton of that i think uh, we are seeing people trying to reimagine our world uh, as we go through this crisis because it's i don't think we've ever uh, at least in a century had to deal with a 
something of this nature so i'm actually following a ton of them on social media as they try to kind of navigate their businesses their institutions through this crisis um so would you like to share one person's name for us to also uh, follow i've been following um, a ton of uh, uh, you know business leaders who are for example repurposing their facilities for uh medical equipments at the stage um repurposing their resorts to become care facilities um who should we follow i have actually i've been a little bit geeky about this and trying to follow uh a lot of health experts epidemiologists as they uh, you know give us inputs on how how this uh, pandemic is going to go through and just so we have more information on how to deal with it um i i i've been a big fan of uh, the work that barkha dat has been doing i think she's you know uh, if anybody had any doubts about her journalistic capabilities and i mean you know, she's just true spirit of journalism to just showcase the unintended consequences of the lockdown that we are seeing uh, um here in india right where we have a large number of migrant workers who make up uh, you know a large percentage of our cities um the population but they're all hidden none of us thought about them it's nice to see that she's putting such an early spotlight on that challenge and hopefully we all can contribute to uh, you know helping the most vulnerable Uh, citizens of our communities who are going to be most impacted by this challenge and really social okay. distancing seems like a such an elite thing to talk about uh, for anybody who's worked on urban india and you know thinking about cities in india right because most of our cities don't have access to water so just kind of messaging You know, on washing your hands seems so elite most citizens in a city like mumbai don't have water to wa- your drink to wash their hands and they're all uh, packed in super densities uh, in their homes so social distancing seems a little bit far away uh, for most people who are living in india cities so i think um i i i love the leadership that some of the journalists have shown uh, this time to put a spotlight on that because we have to really think about those vulnerable communities to go through this um crisis and figure out how to be um you know empathetic and you know think about basic services for all of them at this time and that comes back to uh, you know your role as an urban planner designer architect how do you see this uh, uh, you know this crisis changing that field how we design cities make them more inclusive um you know be more thoughtful in our planning processes could you share a light on that i think a lot of the principles that we've spoken about in the last 10 years uh, whether it is to kind of think about um, you know great places for livelihood for uh, the most vulnerable communities in our cities or you know think about connect between health and urban planning um as a policy i think the opportunity today is that people will pay more attention to this uh these ideas of you know sustainable development goals as we go forward uh because of the scale of, of this crisis so i think for a lot of us uh within the you know community of policy making this is a great time to push forward those agendas so at least we build a more humane and inclusive um you know place for the future Okay so I don't want to keep this a very long interview it's meant to be just reflection so what is the one thing you learned about yourself during the social distancing phase I uh 
that I can entertain myself to no end. Uh, I think I've, I'm fine with this. I think I've been very resilient through this. I'm actually trying to do a lot more digital detox and figure out other things to do than uh, than being on our phones and uh, computers. Um, yeah, I've, I think we're still in day four, Elsa. We have a long time to go to figure out uh, how we're going to cope with this. What is the one thing you try to do every day to keep sane and normal? I, I've been attending uh, meditation, online meditation classes, and um, I'm going to start doing some exercises every day, even if we're locked up. And I try to talk to a few people on uh, video chat just to be connected. Once this crisis is over and we come back to some sense of normalcy, what is the one thing you want to do and focus on? Mm, one thing. I think I, I really want to uh, make more time to put a spotlight on um, on inclusion in development. I think this pandemic is going to show you uh, how unfair and unequal the world is. And you're already seeing consequences of, for example, the lockdown on our world. So um, I think this will give all of us a great opportunity to pivot and move towards you know, policies that make our cities, places, communities more uh, uh, inclusive, humane. And I hope we can start uh, putting a spotlight on that as we go forward with this. Let me just check. I think there are a couple of... Uh you know, comments. I think Pearl um, did have something to say on this. Since this is my first time using this studio um, software, I'm just figuring this out. But um, Pearl Mosquito says, for me, my greatest concern are my employees, staff, and their families. And that's so true because, uh, you know, they won't have access to the resources that we have. And their homes might be, if they have a home that is, as we are seeing with the migrants, um, you know, they, they may be sharing one room with so many people. So that's also not possible to socially distance even within the home. So we really have a lot to be grateful for. And um, I hope by sharing our collective journeys, uh, we can learn from each other. We can find solidarity and empathy because that's what leadership is all about during a crisis. So thank you, Pratima, for joining me today. Uh, today is my mom's birthday. So a shout out to her. Happy birthday. Uh, I'm going to try and bake a cake for her and then <laughs> share it with our neighbors because we don't want to eat too much of sweet as well. So thank you, Happy everyone. Birthday. <laughs> Have a and wonderful day. Everyone remember to do some little bit of digital detox in your day. Yeah, I'm going to try and disconnect for the rest of the day because uh, during the week, I'm so busy attending Zoom meetings one after the other. Every evening from 4 to 10 or 11, I'm on a Zoom meeting. And then this is apart from my daily work. So it's become a little hectic, more than the physical world in some ways. So yes, um, today is Sunday. I hope you're watching this. But I also hope you will take some time off from the digital devices and uh, do some self-reflection. Join me every day at 10 o'clock. I'm going to try and do this every day at 10 o'clock. Uh, it's going to be called Daily Reflections During COVID-19. I'm going to get one of my friends every day to share uh, what wonderful human beings they are, but also their own experiences because they are all leaders in their own right. And we would like to learn from them. So thank you, Pratima. Have a wonderful day in Udupi. Enjoy. Thank you, Have a great day, guys. See you. Bye.